cycle at St. Michael's. You can do it too. What we do here is we try to recycle them for the good of the earth. Not just to raise money for the school, but to make the earth a better place for our generation and generations to come. And every morning, there's a roster under the school that tells us which day we're working and what our duties are. The Core Network Project is a fantastic example of a homegrown, localised initiative. It is focused on including community groups and community members in their active participation in recycling for the benefit of their community. The Core Network or Community Recycling Network is, has been a one-year project funded by the Coca-Cola Foundation. The idea of which is that we would um, establish community recycling centers, both in neighborhoods, schools, really any community group. It could be a church, it could be anywhere where people gather regularly or where they live. From SBRC's point of view, it's very important to have community recycling programs and then that will impact on the amount of recyclable materials that we actually re receive here and we can recover from the waste stream. But the big problem is, is that a lot of people don't know how to recycle. They don't know what to recycle and they don't know how to do it. The Core Network's job, in my mind, has been to educate as many communities as possible and to set up example communities or, um, if you will, you know, practice sessions where we can sit there and go, okay, well this really works in a community like a school, in, an, in, a, in a primary age level school, this works. In a secondary school, well that doesn't work so well, but this works. Because you're dealing with different types of people, different groups, and they may approach the problem in a different way. It is relatively easy to maintain our recycling center because we did an educational program first, where parents were told what can be recycled and how you need to recycle the stuff. You can't just bring any old thing and throw it in here or any dirty thing and throw it in here. So the students help to remind their parents and the parents in turn cooperate and bring the stuff that we need to recycle. The benefit to the communities and to the island as a whole is currently there is a fourth landfill being um, developed and the extended lifespan for that is between five to eight years and that's with no sorting at source. Um, if the communities are to get involved in sorting at source that can be extended to at least 15 to 20 years. People are becoming more aware of recycling. Uh, we, we, we started actually to see some people separating their stuff as well. And we even had some kids that came here on a tour and they saw the stuff that we were doing and, and they advised their parents, they went home and advised their parents to, to, to recycle. Since we started in October, we have collected over 11,000 items that did not go into a landfill. It's definitely an uh, increased number of items uh, that's not going towards the landfill for March. Um, we've actually doubled in the last quarter um, and right now, uh, today, we've collected about 20,000 items. We've been able to benchmark best practices in a number of different community groups, from nursery schools to primary schools, secondary, neighbourhoods, businesses. There are so many different organisations and communities that we've been able to include in this program. And it's a blueprint, it really is a blueprint of how recycling can be done in Barbados with the support and encouragement and participation of the people of this country. And we can show other people, you know, what they can do. So if you're a secondary school in Barbados, we can show you examples of other secondary schools that are successful. If you're a church, we're working with a church right now, we can show you how church groups can get involved in their various groups within their church. It was through this particular program that in my year as president of the Rotary Club, uh, we became involved in a, in a project as the year's project at Rotary, <clears throat> whereby we tried to get each company and each individual within the club involved in their own areas in various recycling programs, which has spawned quite a few on an individual level. Uh, this year, I'm working on the corporate level to try and make sure that every company within, that's represented within the Rotary Club is in fact a green company. I think the government and the adults should have a recycling center like, near the supermarket and like, 
near their workplace, like have get some bins. Well, it would be great if the Barbados government would just pick up glass, plastic and metal and cardboard on different days. It's going to be quite a while before that happens. But the notion is if we can get a population of people so well organized and so knowledgeable about how to prepare the recycling, cleaning things out, you know, stacking their cardboard, make, putting their cardboard together in a manageable way so that the truck can take it away. I think it's very important for the public and private sector to work together, especially in educating the community, um, the children on the whole, at the schools, in the household. Um, a lot more awareness on television, in the newspaper, just be out there and be campaigning for it. What I would like to see with the core network um, for the next uh, year or so is that they could get more schools involved. We can collect more recyclables and keep our landfills to a very, very minimum. We would like to have a more whole school approach, not only with the members of the club, but also with other students within the school, within the school community. There are many staff members who are actually contributing to the club as well by bringing their recyclables from home. And every day we have people who are asking who are staff members at the school, but we want this to expand beyond that. And also involve the community around the school so they will know of it and bring in their stuff so that we can recycle. I wish that more people would include themselves. Like around the school, I wish more people would include themselves in the recycling center. If we don't recycle, we wouldn't have anywhere for us to live and our future generation. And my wish list is that more people are bringing more recyclable things and that more students are willing to work in the recycling center. My hope is that it would be part all of Barbados, all communities who become part of the recycling movement. I would like to see less people throwing garbage around and throwing less garbage into the sea. Parents and adults, teachers, every, almost every adult can encourage their children to recycle. You know, it's not a big island, but so I really think that it's very doable because we, in fact, being a small island, you know, we can prove to the world we can do it. I am happy to see the transition that has happened. It has been slow, but ever, every once in a while you would see something that would make you think, well, it's been worth it. I am proud of my kids, my school, my principal for implementing this program because it does have the advantage of uh, making a better environment, let them become more aware of the environment and preserving the environment as the environmental treasures. We're very, very proud of our children. They have taken this on with gusto and as I said earlier, they are the future so it is important that they become involved. I am extremely proud of the members of the club who have really been contributing to the centre because they are taking responsibility as young citizens of uh, St. Michael School and of Barbados. Also, they are impacting on their peers as far as uh, why they are doing this. So I think it is going to have a far-reaching effect and that is why I am so proud of them. I'm, I think the schools are doing a tremendous job from all reports. I mean, I've seen awards being given out to various schools and it's unbelievable the amount that they bring in. So the top few things I think that have come out of this on the school front, that are the schools I've been working with, firstly, uh, just a much higher level of awareness of the environment in general coming out of the recycling program. Secondly, the um, students are taking the information home to their families, teaching their families, and they're having conversations at the dinner table. And thirdly, really, is just a general helping the environment in Barbados, especially when it comes to solid waste at the landfill. We're reducing the number of valuable items uh, that, uh, that have been going into the landfill. Every country has their own way of recycling, and in Barbados, we've been able to maintain and certainly develop and maintain an initiative that is achievable in the current environment here in Barbados. I'm just very pleased that someone like the Future Trust is involved with this. I mean, you have been there since my child, my kids were young and, and you've been trying so hard and finally I think you're going to see the success that you've been working towards. The next phase as far as I'm concerned really is going to involve more funding. Um, if we are able to continue this program, 
if we were able to uh, use what we've learned and uh, move forward and get into even more communities um, and uh, ideally train more people just like myself to go out and teach this very valuable information, I think that would be a big benefit to Barbados. We wanted to thank the supporters to this project, the Coca-Cola Foundation. They have enabled the project to be initiated and certainly for us to do more work in ensuring that the lessons learned in this project can be expanded and shared with the wider community. Thank you to the Coca-Cola Foundation from the Green Green Recycling Team. Together we can protect and preserve the environment. Thank you to the Coca-Cola Foundation.